Sarah here once again. I am back at you with another Skillshare video. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. Explore new skills, develop existing interests, and get lost in creativity. It's curated specifically for learning. There are no ads and they are always adding new premium classes so that you can follow wherever your creativity takes you. Whether you're a beginner or a pro, you're a creative. Discover what you can make with classes for every skill set. I think one of the best classes I've recently taken on Skillshare is called Finding Fulfillment, Using Pivots to Power Your Creative Career by Emma Gannon, who is an author, broadcaster, and podcast host. This class was awesome um, just because it's something that I believe in, and I just think it's really important to keep reassessing why you're doing something, what you're getting out of it, where you want to be in the future, do you feel fulfilled, and then just like constantly weighing that against what you're doing and how you're able to make a living. So yeah, I think this class does a really great job of highlighting that if you want to check it out. When you join, you can try one of Skillshare's live classes. Experience real-time inspiration as you connect with popular teachers and watch along with other members. Skillshare offers membership with meaning. Connect with the support of fellow creatives and enter a community of encouragement, communication, and inspiration. The first thousand of my subscribers to click at the link in the description below will get a free one month trial of Skillshare so that you can start exploring your creativity today. But before we get started, just so you know, I am in standard tuning. I tend to tap everything just because I think it's super easy, but as always, feel free to play this whatever way works best for you. So part one, slow down, sounds like this. Start on 17 at the high E with your first finger on your right hand. Then you're gonna go 14, 15 on the B with your left hand. Then you're gonna go up to 18 on the B with your right hand. Then down to 14, 15 again, so. And that's just 17, 14, 17 on the E, B, and E with your first finger on both hands. So that pattern is. You're gonna move it up to the 18th fret, same pattern, but you're gonna go 18 on the high E with your first finger, and then 14, 15, but this time on the G string. E, yes. Um, um, then you're gonna move your first finger on your right hand up to the 18 on the high E. And you're gonna move your 14, 15 down a string to the G. So. And that's 18 on the high E and 17 on the B. So you're kind of making an X shape with your right hand in how you're alternating. So again, that's. And then part two, slow down, sounds like this. Then you're gonna be starting out with your middle finger on your right hand on the 15 of the B. And that is 12, 14, 15 on the G, so. And then you're gonna hit that 12 on the D string. So you're gonna do 14, 15 on the D string with your right hand. Then 14, 15 on the G string with your left hand. Then 15 on the B. So. Then 18 on the B. And you're gonna slide 18 down to 17 on the high E. Once again, that whole beginning part, um, slow down sounds like this. Okay, so for part three, you're going to start with your left hand, first finger on the 14th fret of the D string, up to 17, and then you're going to go to the G string and you're going to play 15 and 18. So you've got, and that's 15, 17, 18 on the B with your left hand, so. Then you're gonna play 20 on the B and 21 on the E. And then that's just down to the 17. Go up to the 22nd fret, and then you're gonna slide down. And then you do these kind of like octave chords with your first finger and ring finger, or I guess however you wanna do it, um, but it starts on the 10th fret of the A string. It goes 10, 12, 13, 12. And then you're gonna jump up, holding that same shape, but moving your ring finger up a fret so that you've got the octave on the B. So up there, what I'm doing with my ring finger, I've got the 18, 17, 17, and you end on the 17 of the G string. So those chords together sound like this. And then the 
fourth part starts right after those chords, so... And for that, you're going to start with your middle finger on your right hand on the 19th fret of the G string. So it's 1919. 1919, 15, 17 on the D string. Ending on 17 of the A, then you're going to play 17 of the G. And that's 17, 15, 14 with a little bend on the end, so... The chords transitioning into the beginning of the fourth part sound like this. Okay, so to kind of recap, because it's sort of like a, it's short, but it's kind of like a lot of parts in a short amount of time, so I'll play it slowly from the beginning right now. So the fifth and final part is going to start with this like tappy pull on pull off thing. So that's 18 and then 18 on the B and then 14, 15, 14, 15 on the G. So you're just kind of going between 18 and 17, 18, 17. And then you move it down a string to go 17, 17, 15, 14. Okay, and then to finally end the solo, you're going to slide up to 17 on the A string with your right hand. You're going to hit 12, 13 on the E. Use your ring finger to hit that 14 on the G string. And that's 17 on the D. You're going to use your first finger on your right hand to slide from 17 to 19 on the A. And then just hold out 12 on the G. So slow down, that sounds like this. And that's the whole solo. Here's what it sounds like without the backing track. So that's the whole solo. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun writing it. If you want the tabs, backing track, solo, soloed, be sure to hit up my Patreon. It's in the description below. And thank you so much to my Patreon people. Per usual, you guys are the best. And thank you so much to Skillshare, as always, for sponsoring this video. They're really rad, and I do really enjoy what they have to offer, so you guys should totally check them out. I'll see you around.